Sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. Launch pads, spaceports, and data centers on the moon? Well, soon those dreams could become reality. The battle for AI dominance is now forcing companies to think outside the box and outside our atmosphere, racing to get massive computing centers into outer space. Joining me now for more on all of this is Ross Centers, CEO of Ethos Space. Ross, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Gio. Okay, so let's try to break this all down here. So data centers on Earth, they're actually causing a massive strain on, on precious resources, of course, electricity, water. So why would data centers on the move be a better alternative? Well, the data centers on the moon are a really opportune moment in history because right now we're building ships that can get there. And it's always been an eighth continent that is just hanging in the sky. But what it's for is it has infinite power, infinite cooling and infinite mineral resources to manufacture these data centers. So what you're seeing here is the first stage of a one gigawatt data center on the moon. And those solar panels and those towers, those are all made from lunar resources. These can all be made from the regolith that you find at any landing pad, anywhere you land on the moon. So we can take away the problem of trying to fit all of the energy demands for infinite growth in AI onto Earth, competing with human resources, and we can put that onto the moon and we can create a new continent where we make our data centers and we have our compute live, and it's gonna solve a lot of problems. What about the fact that, that the moon controls tides, it helps stabilize seasons, among so many other things uh, here on Earth. Are there any concerns that building that kind of infrastructure there on the moon could potentially have unintended environmental consequences for us here on Earth? None at all. The moon only interacts with the earth through its gravity, right? So when we transform this regolith into landing pad materials like this hard rock, or we make it into solar panels and data centers, that doesn't change the gravity of it. And even if we launch material off the moon, we're gonna be taking such a small percentage that there'll be no difference at all. What about this major question that, you know, who owns the moon, right? The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 says that no nation can own the moon. So could this lead to a conflict of companies start claiming uh, lunar real estate? I mean, I can imagine quite the legal battle, uh, an interstellar legal battle might happen. Well, U.S. law is actually very clear that if you start developing something on the moon, if you make something on the moon, that's yours and you have title to it. And international law agrees, even the Outer Space Treaty says you can't interfere with what other people are doing. Uh, we have 55 nations signed up to the Artemis Accords and they all stand for an affirmative vision of property rights, where if you build it, it's yours. All right, well, if I can get there, I'll claim my property right there. Um, so all of this sounds very futuristic. How long do you think that it will take to, to put these spaceports on the moon? This is happening very quickly, right? The United States and China are locked in a new space race and China is, is hitting all of its goals on time. There are going to be Chinese astronauts on the moon before 2030 and the United States is bound to keep up. So we're gonna be building a spaceport on the moon by the end of this decade. And very quickly after that, we're gonna be able to create solar cells and cooling panels and be able to host very scalable data structures right there on the moon early next decade. All right, Ross Centers, the CEO of Ethospace, a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Gio.